Hi, Chip Tuners. This is Gwem, and welcome to the last episode, at least in this series, of Maximizer tutorials. So, I've been covering Maximizer and how to use it. Maximizer is the Atari ST chip music uh, tracker, which I wrote. In the last episode, we talked about the SID effect, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the sync buzzer effect. But before we do that, I just want to say thanks to everyone. I've been doing an episode a week for the last six weeks or so. And I really appreciate all the comments, likes and shares. It's really kind of kept me going. It's shown that you're interested in it and I appreciate it a lot. Um, the question being now, uh, will there be a kind of a second season? And there could be a second season, probably not straight away because... You know, I'd like to chill out with the missus and stuff on the weekend for a bit. But uh, if you do want to see a second season, let me know the types of things that you'd like to learn. Um, and finally, obviously, I am a musician. So if you want to have the Gwem show at your rave or party, you know where to get in touch with me. Uh, with the season finishing, I also want to kind of summarize where you can go for help. Um, obviously, you can write to me, but um, you can also do a few other things. So there are three example tunes that come with Maximizer, and have a look at those for some tips and ideas. Maybe you can raid the instruments. There's also, as I've been showing you in the tutorials, a online help. The online help is more like a reference, but um, there well, are some tips in there as well. Also, have a look at the manual. The Maximizer webpage has um, two tutorials, one on the instrument editor and one on the tracker and on the instrument editor. So have a look at those if, you know, sometimes hearing things explained a different way can help as well. And there's also some instrument packs on the Maximizer webpage. Now, all this is just the beginning. It'd be great if you um, took some of these effects that I've been explaining and um, use Maximizer in a different way to, to create some new sounds. Uh, the name of the game is to experiment, and I think um, Chiptune on the Atari ST has been a lot about uh, innovation over the years, and it'd be great to see um, some people continuing that with some new sounds. So, for the last time, here is the YM architecture diagram. In the last episode, we talked about using the Atari ST timer to adjust the constant volume levels to generate software waveforms and possibly modulating that with the square wave from the YM to create the SID effect. Now, we can also use the timer to manipulate the envelope generator or the buzzer. And you can create analog synthesizer type effects. And what this does is to re-trigger the buzzer at audible rates. And I can show you what I mean by that on the next slide. So here is a normal sawtooth wave buzzer. Now, what we do in sync buzzer is to re-trigger this buzzer at audible rates. So here is a buzzer and here is a sync buzzer. Where the arrows are, showing you where the buzzer has been re-triggered. So the first step, it starts with the sawtooth wave, but before it completes, the timer re-triggers the sawtooth wave and you get more steps. Now, here I've shown the same waveform being re-triggered, but it doesn't have to be the same waveform. As you know, the YM has a lot of waveforms for the buzzer, and you could try different waveforms at each step. Doing it like that is technically a sync buzzer, but to get the cool and interesting effect that the sync buzzer has, you really need to do a frequency sweep between the buzzer frequency and the frequency that the timer is re-triggering it. And I have, as always, an example from the 
YM archives. This is a song by a chip tuner called Tao, who actually um, inspired me to create Maximizer when I was reading an interview from him uh, a few years ago now. Um, some of his techniques seemed really interesting and I wanted to, to have a go myself. So shout out to Tao. And here is a song by him, which is called Quest. And um, it starts straight away with the sync buzzer sound and it's the way he uses the sync buzzer is I think quite beautiful. So that kind of vowel-like sound is the sync buzzer. And that's what I'll be showing you how to do. Now, when I um, use sync buzzer in my tracks, it tends to be uh, quite a lot more aggressive sounding than that. Um, so I wanted to show you an example of the sync buzzer doing something kind of haunting. It's a very versatile and powerful effect. So this is probably a slide that you expected to see. It's just explaining what we've been explaining in the, the last few episodes. So here you, you program your timer sequence with the buzzer waveforms. Here um, is where you, you program that. And you can also use the detuners here. So we're going to go to Maximizer in just a second. And here are the things I'm going to cover when I do that. First of all, online help. The mixer sequence, the what you need to put in to activate the sync buzzer, the different buzzer waveforms that you can use for the sync buzzer. Then I'll show you a simple sync buzzer effect. And I'll also show you the effect of changing the buzzer waveform. So come back in just a second. I'm going to fire up the Atari and we'll go through the sync buzzer. Welcome back to our old friend Maximizer. Now, as I do each time, I want to point out some things in the online help, uh, which will help with the sync buzzer. The online help is here. So I want to cover something in the to do with the YM. So I'm going to click YM. And I'm going to go on to the second page. Now here is the mixer sequence which selects uh, what the YM is, is performing at each uh, step of the sound. So here we can see the final column is the timer column. And if we put B there, we will get a sync buzzer effect. And also just to point out on the first page of the YM section, Again, all the buzzer waves. We covered that in the in the buzzer tutorial, but obviously the sync buzzer uses the buzzer, so I wanted to include it here. So let's make a sound. Right click here and type in an instrument name. Now we should choose sync buzzer in the mixer sequence. So I'm gonna select the mixer sequence then I press N for a new sequence. That appears down here. Now I will choose here B for the sync buzzer. Now do we hear any sort of sound? No. We need to set a volume envelope. So I click the volume sequence, press N for a new sequence. New sequence appears down here. I just choose F. Now, do we hear a sound now? Well, what we do here is a click, uh, which is the YM channel opening and closing. So we still need to do something else. And that is to activate the buzzer in the mixer. So I'm going to click on the mixer sequence. 
Now, the B represents that the sync buzzer is happening on the timer, but we don't actually have the buzzer selected. So I'm going to put a 1 in the buzzer column, which is the third column. Now, do we hear a sound? Yes, we do. That is our sync buzzer. Now, as you can hear, it doesn't really sound very different to a normal buzzer. Now, the sync buzzer, more than any other YM effect, needs experimentation to really get the best sounds out of it. Um, if you just do a simple sync buzzer like that, it doesn't sound very interesting at all. But you can get that spectacular sync buzzer sound by working with it. So what are we actually doing? Now the timer sequence is set to zero, which means that we are choosing buzzer waveform zero, which is this falling ramp. And we're re-triggering that at um, the rate which is dictated by the timer. And now there's no detuning happening, so the timer is, is just triggering it at the same speed as the normal note. So we re-trigger this ramp at the speed of the note and all we hear is the ramp repeating which gives the same thing as a sawtooth wave. So that hopefully explains to you why we just hear this boring sound at the moment. So what could we do to spice it up? We could change the waveform, but I'm going to leave that for now. Um, what we need to do is to sweep the frequency of the timer and the buzzer. Now, you could choose to detune the buzzer, or you could choose to detune the timer. Now, both of these approaches are valid approaches. And I suggest that you experiment with both ways. But I'm going to start by changing the buzzer. Now, in the first case, I won't do a sweep. I'm just going to do a fixed detune. So I'm going to select fixed detune here. And I'm going to change this course value for the detune until we hear a difference in sound. Now, you don't really hear a significant difference to begin with, but soon uh, you will hear one. Uh, you can hear a very thin kind of sound, and I'll just explain why. So we've tuned up the timer sequence, sorry, we've tuned up the timer waveform by quite a large amount here. So what that does is it's reducing the um, the width of this downward ramp. Now the timer is, is still happening at the same rate, but so the frequency of the sound doesn't change. But it gets more quiet because this um, pulse, this downward ramp is happening over a much shorter period. So, now I will show you the same thing, but using one of the repeating waveforms. I'll, I'll do waveform 8. So I'm going to select here the timer sequence. Press N for a new sequence. The new sequence appears down here, and I'm going to use 8, which is this sawtooth. Now I'm going to play the sound. Now again, it, it just um, happens that it's re-triggering the sawtooth wave at, at regular intervals, which is 
where it would repeat anyway. So we're going to do the D tune here and watch for the watch this number and listen as I change it. Right, now the effect of changing the detune uh, is happening a lot sooner. And in fact, it happens after you pass C, which is 12 in decimal, so it's one octave. Now the reason why it happens then is because we are starting to get some of the second repeat of the buzzer happening. So you get some extra harmonic um, content in the higher frequencies. Which gives you that sound, which is different to the normal buzzer. Now, again, this is a sync buzzer, but it's a bit more interesting than before. You could definitely use that in a track, but if you want to get the really interesting sounds, you really need to do a frequency sweep. So what I'm going to do is revert, re return this value for the fixed detune to C, so it's just starting to get those high frequency components. Okay, so we want to do a frequency sweep a bit like the fake resonant effect that we did with the buzzer. So this happens with an arpeggio, so I need to enable arpeggio here on the buzzer. And I'm going to choose the arpeggio sequence and press N for a new sequence. That's appeared down here. What I'm going to do is make this sequence very long. There we go, that's the longest it can be, 1F, which is 31 steps. Now I want to generate in here a sweep, a downward ramp. You could also do an upward ramp, but I'm going to start with a downward one. Click here the Sequence Editor extension. And here we can generate the ramp exactly as we did for the fake acid effect. So. Minimum is going to be zero, and I'm going to boost the maximum, I don't know, just to some value, C, another octave. And we want to generate a, a downward ramp, so I'm going to press down here. And that has now generated a sequence down here, which is the downward ramp. So let's hear what that sounds like now. So there is movement happening in the sound, and it sounds quite a lot more interesting. You can hear the effect in the in the higher harmonics of starting with the primer at a higher frequency and then reducing down. The bass note is always the same because the timer isn't changing frequency, but the harmonic content of the waveform is changing because we're changing the frequency of the buzzer. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a filter. Now we can... Um, play a bit with this ramp, so I'm going to increase the maximum value a bit more. Let's go to two octaves, which is 1-8. You can see here that it starts with a higher frequency. Oh, something interesting there. Now it's repeating on step zero, so I'm actually going to change that to the last step which is 1F. So I had some questions about this in the other tutorials. This is the repeat step. So when it gets to the end, it will just go back to this step, which is, in this case, the last step. So it will just end there. Now 
Now I'd like the ramp to descend more slowly, so I'm going to increase the sequence speed. I'm going to make it even slower than that. I'm going to go to three. Okay, this is is probably a, a good place to say that this is the kind of simple sync buzzer sound. What happens if we reverse the ramp? So at the moment we start high and then go low. So I'm going to generate a ramp in the other direction by clicking up here. So the ramp starts at zero and now goes up. could definitely use that for a, a kind of dirty bass line, some sort of drum and bass track. Now I wanted to finish by showing you the effect of changing the buzzer waveform, so I'm going to go back to the timer sequence and show you that. Here we've just got one waveform, which is waveform 8. Now I'm going to show you back in help the different waveforms we could choose. Now we can choose from any of these. This is the, the hard buzz of the sawtooth. Let's try um, a triangle wave. Let's tr put A there instead of 8. Now this is quite interesting, you can kind of hear, I'm just pressing the key once, but listen. It kind of dips in the middle. Now th this is perfectly understandable when you think about the dynamics of the sync buzzer. Now the triangle wave is already one octave lower than the sawtooth wave. That's just how the YM works. So why it, it goes softer in the middle is because actually at the beginning uh, we just have one downward part of the triangle wave. Now as we come up to two octaves of, of detune, we get the whole triangle wave so it has the softer sound. And then as we continue we start to get the second um, repeat of the triangle wave and we get a high frequency component again. So what I'm actually going to do is detune higher some more the buzzer. I'm going to do two octaves. So now you won't hear the dip in the middle. So I'm going to do a downward ramp for the arpeggio. So I'm going to click the arpeggio sequence. Click down for the ramp. So now it starts at 18 and goes to zero. So what's that sound like? <laughs> sounding a bit like the tower, but sorry, it's sounding a bit like the tower buzzer that we had in the example. That's a good sound. What happened if we choose some of these other ones? Now, interestingly, we don't need to choose repeating waveforms. We did for the normal buzzer, because the timer is always re-triggering the waveforms, we can choose some of these waveforms which are non-repeating. Let us try waveform B, which has this rather interesting um, kind of upside down sawtooth but it's only one cycle. So I'm going to click the timer sequence there. Now we can see we've selected waveform A at the moment. I'm going to go for B. That 
that's actually quite interesting. You can hear some change in the sound, but because it's not a repeating waveform, um, the effect is much more subtle than a repeating one. But that's definitely um, kind of a soft and usable sound. Now, we've only been using one uh, waveform here, and I said in the slides that you could have more waveforms here. So I'm going to insert another step. So I'm going to click here and press insert. We've got a second step here. We've got waveform B, and we can choose another one. Let's choose something completely different. Let's put, mix it with uh, waveform C. So we're going to do C and then B. Right, now this is where the real interest starts to come. Well, it was pretty interesting before. I'm going to speed up a bit the ramp. It's kind of a, a fat sort of sound. You could definitely use that for a bass or perhaps a um, kind of mid-range kind of distorted synth sound. I could literally spend hours going over the different things you can experiment with, but I think you've seen the majority of, of where you can go with it. So you can set different waveforms here. Um, experiment with one or more waveforms. You can choose here this long list of the eight buzzer waveforms that the YM has. The detune is very, very important to getting the best from this sound. So experiment with different ramps up and down, detuning by different amounts. Here we're detuning the buzzer. You can also get some very interesting sounds by detuning the timer. And I'll leave that as, as something for you to do. The sync buzzer is, I think, the one of the more interesting, uh, well, I think it is the most interesting YM effect. And it's interesting technically because it's one of the more modern effects that were found. And I think there's still a lot that we can explore with it. You heard the Tao song, the kind of beautiful, haunting um, sound that he was able to create. You might have heard some of my tracks, which use the sync buzzer as more of a kind of drum and bass kind of sound. But there's really no limits to that. And it sounds very great when you combine it with the SID or whatever in your track. So give it a go. I look forward to seeing what you create with the sync buzzer. And since this is the last episode in the series, I'm just going to say take it easy and uh, see you soon.